We are big fans of IMRs in Duron line of powders, and in this video, we're gonna talk about 8133, which is the slowest. Gavin you here from ultimatereloader.com. I'm back with Guy Miner. Thank you for joining us, Guy. You bet. We're talking about some of my favorite stuff today. That's right. We've been on a roll lately with our powder overviews. We've been getting down and dirty. And this time we're going to talk about IMR Enduron 8133. Good stuff. Yeah. And you've been hands-on th with this. I have. I've had a lot of fun uh, working with it. I didn't even know about it a year ago. <laughs> and I uh, couldn't find Rotumbo. Yep. Not any local stores, but I walked in and saw this 8133. I said, wait a minute, that's a slow burning powder. Let's try that. Yeah, and uh, the Enduron line of powders is interesting because we're fans also of Hodgson's Extreme line of powders because right. they're formulated for that temperature stability. We're also fans of Hodgson's copper fouling eraser technology in the CFE, CFE pistol, CFE 223, CFE BLK. IMAR's Enduron line of powders bring the temperature stability and the copper fouling reduction agents together in one powder, which I think is a pretty compelling formula. It is. It makes it very attractive. And of course, this one speaks to our love of some of the uh, overborn <laughs> magnum cartridges. <laughs> Absolutely. It was interesting for me to find out that your 25-06, for instance, is overbore, and you might not think of that as needing a magnum powder, but it does. It responds really well, these slow yeah. burning magnum type powders, mm -hmm. both Rotumbo and I found out 8133. Yes, I've been using a lot of magnum powders for things like 6.5 PRC and 300 PRC, or even the 300 Remington Ultra Magnum, and uh, they're a lot of fun. That's a lot of cartridge. Sometimes you need magnum power, whether it be for hunting or just to send a real message to that steel target, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so let's talk about Burn rate, this is a good place to start when we talk about a powder. What is it suitable for? Well, in order to answer that question, we need to look at this relative burn rate chart. And just to review, these numbers go from small to large. You're going to read down each column. The smallest numbers are the fastest powders, and the largest number, it corresponds to the slowest powder. Now, there are no units, and this is not something that's easily quantifiable, but what you can do is say that one is faster than another, and one is slower than another. Right. Those slow burning ones are what we're looking at for our big magnum type cartridges. Absolutely. So we've expanded this little inset here. This is that magnum powder burn rate range from number 140 up to 159. Now we just did Rotumbo recently. You are going to want to check out that video. And it's at 154. You notice IMR8133 is at right next to it at 155. Right next to it. That made it real attractive to me because I was looking to, I couldn't find Rotumbo. Yep. So, but I found 8133. Yep. And this is so slow that it's it's not far from H50 BMG, which is at 160, right? This, this little inset range goes to 159. So it's kind of a little bit slower even in that Magnum range, it appears. Yeah, yeah, it's it's getting there, and, and that slow burning powder like that it works perfectly on things like 300 magnums, seven millimeter magnums, uh, yeah. some of the hot six fives. And you've you've pulled data for this. So let's take a look at the cartridges that you selected, some of which you use, and actually the other ones are ones that I use. So good collection here. <laughs> I don't think anybody will have any trouble figuring out which one of us uses which ones. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I've got the old cartridges, the 25 watt 6 and I'm the, the 7 mag. Yep. 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 <laughs> and those loads are loads that I used. Mm -hmm. um, if you use them, please work up carefully. Those are max level loads. And always reference multiple OEM sources of load data just to make sure everything's just, good Just to go. be on the safe side, yeah. Yep. So 25 watt 6 one of my favorite open country mule deer and antelope cartridges. And you take that 115 burger or that mm -hmm. high BC and you boot it out at over 3,100 feet per second, you've got one flat shooting and it's still so easy on the recoil. Yeah. So I like it. Um, what a good deer hunting situation right there. It is. That, yeah. that rifle for open country deer hunting mm -hmm. has been fantastic. I've been using it for about 18 years and mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's filled a lot of tags. Nice. Then the 6.5 PRC, 153 Hornady A-tip, that is a really good bullet. 57.8 uh, grains of the 81.33 gets you about 2,824 feet per second, which is sailing right along. <laughs> it is, you know, and, and again, with these, these modern bullets with a high BC, mm -hmm. these don't drop much. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very flat shooting and wind resistant. 
And if you're a hand loader, it's likely you might be able to get velocities even higher if you carefully work up those loads, if you look for pressure signs, and it's not a bad idea to do a water test. If you sprinkle some droplets of water on the shell casing, chamber it, and do your shooting, you might see elevated pressures even beyond what you would normally see. So for hunting, that would be something to look at. With 8133, a temperature stable powder, you're not going to have to worry quite as much about maybe that upper threshold, you know, going even more extreme when the temperatures elevate because it's got that temperature stability kind of built right into the formulation. It does. It yeah. does. And I know one of the things that I noticed with both the 25 watt 6 and the 7 millimeter uh, Remington Magnum was the how closer I got to maximum, mm -hmm. the tighter the SD and the ES figures got those cartridges produced very, very good results at near max and maximum yeah. levels. Yep. Nice to see. Know your rifle, know your load, dial in your accuracy. This is why we're hand loaders, right? <laughs> it is, it is. <laughs> and you know, last summer we got to the seven millimeter Magnum. Yes. And we took my Ruger number one, the 26 inch barrel and put it up there on your, uh, the top of the ridge oh, and shot I it love, up there. I love shooting up there. That was, that was <laughs> great. And we were getting velocities that caused me to step back and take a look <laughs> and to say, wait a minute, is everything okay here? And we're over 3,200 feet per second, approaching 3,300 feet per second with wow. 150 grain bullet, which was considerably faster than I expected. Mm -hmm. But it did it, and it grouped nice and tight. And I took a look at some of the ballistics charts on that, mm -hmm. and that ELDX bullet is so slick, and now we're moving it so fast, 300 yards zero, you're only down eight inches at 400 yards. Wow. Yeah, it's That's like a laser crazy. beam. Yeah. So. How big a game would you want to take with that 150, do you think? Well, the ELDX, definitely mule deer, and uh, I personally, I think I'd go for a tougher bullet if I was looking at, you know, slamming mm -hmm. it into a big old elk shoulder. Mm -hmm. um, but if you want velocity, that's, that's your formula right there, right yeah. out of a 150. Yeah. Super. And, and I'd go <laughs> for a, a 150 that was maybe, a, you know, a solid copper type bullet, like mm -hmm. the Hornady CX or something. Okay, 300 PRC. I want to talk about this 212 ELDX. Good pick on the bullet, by the way. I did a story called, Is 300 PRC Too Much for Deer? <laughs> well, it was too much for that deer to handle. Well, <laughs> it, it was and it wasn't. Like, yeah. there wasn't as much meat damage as you would have thought. And I used the tool that I had on hand. The quick, succinct story is I was on the phone with my friend. I saw a buck go through my property. Whoa, there's never a buck there. Never. <laughs> ever. So I picked the closest rifle, which was the 300 PRC full custom 26 pound <laughs> rifle. And I shot this deer at probably 58 yards. I mean, it was not a difficult shot. <laughs> Good use for your thousand yard rifle. <laughs> exactly. But whoa, talk about instant. That, that, that deer was down. I mean, just down and it didn't even go all the way through the deer. It stopped on the, on the far side. So my, my conclusion was, no, it was not too much. No. And I preserved almost all of the meat, so, so that was great. So this bullet here is, is a great, I think, all-around hunting situation if you do want to go up to those larger game animals like an elk or something. Oh, yeah. And at 2866 feet per second for a 212, you know, that, that is some brutal performance right there. 80.5 grains of powder, guys. <laughs> a, pound, a pound of that doesn't go very right. far when you're filling up things like 300 PRC or you know, 300 Remington Ultra Mag, yep. any of those big ones, 3378 Weatherby. Ooh. That gobbles up, I think, 105 <laughs> grains of powder with each. Hey, we're going to get to 50 BMG here soon. Okay. Right? We're, we're at, what, what, 250 grains of powder or I something did, like that? I don't know. Something ridiculous. Yeah, I haven't even loaded for it yet, but I know it's insane. You've got a 750 grain bullet, too. Okay. <laughs> so, enough Magnum talk. Let's, uh, let's get the microscope going and take a look at things up close. Sure. So, again, we've got the Wi-Fi 400 power microscope. We've got it connected to a tablet. This thing is amazing. It really is. The, the detail that this thing can show us is, is <laughs> phenomenal. <laughs> Way more than you can see with the naked eye. So let's run through the powders left to right that we see here on our little machined cups on our aluminum strip. <laughs> sure. We've got Ramshot Magnum. Mm -hmm. We've got Rotumbo, Varget, and IMR 8133. Nice. So for reference, we've got powder reviews on the channel for all three of those other powders. And of course, we're covering 8133 this time. And for reference here, we've got a steel scale the smallest graduations that you can see there are 1 64th of an inch. So why don't we get up close and personal here? We're going to zoom in. 
This is going to show us a very high level of detail. And I'm just going to go left to right here. So we're going to kind of zoom in on the, the Ramshot Magnum a little closer. And you can see very clearly here, we're going a little bit higher magnification this time, which is great. You can see those are absolutely spherical. They are not flattened, which we found out when we had that static and we're trying to put it on the Yes, they, they were button. running around like crazy. <laughs> yeah, they would not sit still at all. Okay. And then we've got next to that, this is our Rotumbo, is that correct? Yes. Get grab perfect focus here. And what's interesting about this powder is this looks a lot like the Varga. It's got that kind of green cast, which I, I might need to talk to Hodgden and find out, like, what is that exactly? And there's, there's the Varga, which is a little bit more of a yellow-green color and slightly different surface texture. Look at that detail. Isn't that amazing? It is. Go even a little bit. Let's go all the way. Look at that. Wow. It's got kind of like black speckled surface texture and color. And then we've got our 8133, which looks very much more like charcoal. Charcoal. Gr yep. Great big charcoal <laughs> logs. And yeah, you exactly. notice I can only get two of those powder kernels Isn't in to the little dish. Let's it's that much bigger than the other powders. Grab focus on these. Oh, that yeah, looks look at good. That. That's sharp. Wow. That is really, really amazing the level of detail we can get. Okay, so we're going to take this into post production for a moment. We're going to take precise measurements using our steel scale as reference. We're going to be back to talk about the dimensions of these powder granules. So again, in Photoshop, we were able to take the steel scale, get it rotated to just the right position and take some measurements. Now we had already calculated the data for most of these because like I said, they were featured in previous stories. So in ascending order for length or diameter, we have 28 for Magnum, 59 for Varga. These are thousandths of an inch, by the way. <laughs> Rotumbo was at 63, and IMR 8133 was 78 thousandths of an inch long. Considerably different. Yes. Uh, for the spherical powder, of course, the diameter was the same at 28 thousandths of an inch. For Varga, we had 31 thousandths of an inch. Rotumbo, 39 th thousandths of an inch, and IMR 8133, 43. Big honking sticks of powder. They are, they are, <laughs> and yeah. It was kind of kind of fun uh, trying to get it into those little dishes that you'd milled out. Mm -hmm. um, now which but, powder measure were you using when you were loading this stuff? Oh, I was using uh, the Lyman powder measure for most okay. of them. Did you feel the, the sticks getting cut when you were rotating the drum? Actually, uh, not really. That's interesting. Not really. I'd have to go back and, and think about sure. the 8133 and see if I did or not, but it, uh, yeah. I don't remember any big problems with dispensing any of those. Mm -hmm. Well, that's awesome. So let's wrap up then. So this is a powder that is temperature stable. It's got the copper fouling eraser built in and suitable for magnum cartridges. Prop, would you say with median to heavier bullets? Yes. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Uh, all the data I looked at and the stuff that I yep. found out in, in loading for my own cartridges is those heavier bullets responded really well, which they normally do to a slow burning magnum yep. type powder. Um, they did really well. I'd, I'd like to try some heavier bullets in the 7 mag. Yeah, well, and in the 300 PRC, we have, you know, 250-ish green bullets. That's a lot of bullet. That is a lot of bullet. And, and so that lines up perfectly with where the 8133 falls in that burn rate. Right? I think we so. Were in the middle, we were slightly to the lower side of that. Mm -hmm. Higher number, slower burn rate. And so if you've got an overbore cartridge or a magnum cartridge, definitely worth thinking about, especially if you're in the middle or to the heavier side of the bullet range. If, if you're not loading the magnum, obviously this is going to be slow. It's going to yeah. be too slow. For I you. don't see a lot of point in it if you're loading, you know, 6.5 Creed, mm -hmm. 308 Winchester. Mm -hmm. I don't see any point in even, even trying this stuff. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about what's next then. <laughs> what's next? Well, for me, um, I'm working on uh, some loads for hunting with my 7 okay. millimeter Magnum. Yep. And I've got some of those new uh, 150 grain CX bullets from Hornady that I want to try. Oh, yeah. Uh, that ought to be a great one for elk, black bear, mule deer, all of which I plan on hunting next fall. Okay, so this is cool because I've got Hornady Outfitter ammo with CX bullets in 6.5 PRC and 300 PRC, and if you're gonna cover seven, that's right in the middle. Uh, plus, we've got components for hand loading. So right. stay tuned again for, for the CX stuff. That's gonna be a lot of fun. 
the other thing I'm thinking is one of the three of us should do some loads and do some some shooting with the uh, the 6.5 PRC and the 300 PRC with this 8133. Mm -hmm. Might be time for you to rock the big bad boy with the 300 PRC. Sounds good to me. Also, you brought something <laughs> for show and tell. I, I did. 257 Weatherby. We're talking about is this the fastest 25 cal out there, practically speaking? It, it, in production, yes. <laughs> in after 70 years, it's still the fastest. Okay, so I've, in the last day, given myself homework to buy a rifle <laughs> on Gunbroker. <laughs> and I've been thinking for a long time about a Weatherby Mark V. You know the kind they used to give out when you would open a bank account? Yes. Yes, in like the 70s. Uh, my friend growing up, his dad had a 300 Weatherby, and I remember, I remember looking at it thinking, oh my word, the, the inlays, the, the woodwork, the glossy finish, the deep bluing. Oh, just thinking about it, man, I got to start looking. Beautiful rifles, <laughs> yep. And the 25, the 257 Weatherby, I, I like the idea of it because it's going to be fast, it's going to be fun, it's going to be lethal, but it's not going to be quite as brutal in terms of recoil. Not at all. Compared not to all. the 300 Weatherby. I, right? I shoot my 257 and it's uh, maybe maybe a tad more recoil than my 25-06, <laughs> but Ooh. that's it. It's like a 25-06 on steroids. Okay, so two questions for you guys. First, should I buy a Weatherby Mark V in 257 Weatherby Magnum? Yes. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> And second, what are you doing with Enduron powders? If you're using 8133, what are you loading with it? What are you shooting it with? And then what application is it for? Are you shooting long range? Are you shooting ELR with a 300 PRC? Or are you shooting big game hunting? Let us know by dropping a comment and let's start a discussion. Okay, that concludes this video and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, make your voice heard. If you have something to say, please drop a comment. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications because you're not gonna wanna miss the awesome content that is coming up. And finally, flex your reloading pride. You could look great in one of these t-shirts. We've got multiple designs at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'll see you later because I'm off to go shooting.